Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. This week I'm going to kind of be spinning off of last week's topic. Uh, if you weren't here, last week I did an up-close look at the Dark Star Apollo series that they've just recently re-released. And as part of that, I talked about the belt clips that the holster comes with. The RCS overhooks, as well as pretty much all the other clips of that style, are sometimes marketed as tuckable, meaning that it allows you to actually have the holster attached to your belt and still be able to tuck your shirt in. While that is a technically correct statement, virtually all of them fall short. And I'm going to talk about why because with the exception of one, they all still are designed to go over your belt. And I'm wearing it right now, so let's just take a look at the problem. I don't care who you are, this ain't normal. And especially when you are trying to pass off an otherwise sort of socially average outfit. I mean, <clears throat> this is one of the most nondescript things that I can realistically think about wearing. I mean, white button-up shirt, dark blue jeans. Uh, this is almost fail-safe. You know, it's kind of like the, the navy polo and tan chinos. There's almost nowhere where this is inappropriate. So, because this is so run-of-the-mill, this deviates from the norm enough to where someone is going to see that and to steal a line from legendary lawman Marshall Chuck Haggart, their brain's going to go, that shit ain't right. <clears throat> and this is where I think a lot of people have a misconception because there is a very impassioned debate within the concealment space about how much printing matters. I refuse to engage in the debate of whether or not it matters because there's just too much documented evidence that it does. The question is to what degree in a given circumstance. And if you follow me on my Facebook page, I had actually made a post about this a few days ago. Bringing it back. Um, so, the idea being is that if you are in an environment that necessitates having to tuck your shirt in, then there's already a, a standard template that's been established for what people are expecting to see. And when you deviate from that with something like this, it is going to raise questions. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I've had this be the source of curiosity from people on more than one occasion. And, you know, there are those people that will just hand wave and say, oh, well, I tell them that, you know, it's an insulin pump or it's a colostomy bag and whatever. Um, I've got some problems with that. I don't have any experience with either of those devices personally. So, admittedly, this is all theory and, and supposition. If you are somebody with a sensitive medical device and you're comfortable talking about it, I want to hear about that down in the comments because... I see a couple issues with this. Number one, um, honestly, it's, it's, it's kind of insensitive to the people that actually have to live their lives with those medical considerations. Uh, the other part is based on my loose understanding of design. A lot of those sort of medically necessary components are starting to be designed so that their form factor is such that they have as few sharp angles and things on them as possible. And a gun is always going to have some kind of sharp angle on it. The third big issue with it is, you know, if this is just somebody that randomly happens to raise an eyebrow at you in the grocery store, okay, maybe you can get away with it. But if this is somebody in your social circle or at work or someone that you see on a regular basis, you have now committed to a lifestyle that you have to be congruent with in order for that lie to stand up. Um, because most people don't see clips like this and immediately go, that dude's got a gun. That's not how it happens. How it typically happens is 
most people are used to seeing just a belt. When there's something on the belt with nothing to explain it, their brain's gonna go, that is out of the ordinary. I wonder what that is. And then it's going to start drawing additional scrutiny. Now, <clears throat> theoretically, if it was literally just this, maybe I could get away with the clips. But if I've got these clips, and say pepper spray in this pocket, and say a flashlight in this pocket, and say a tourniquet hanging out of my back pocket, all of a sudden that starts painting a much more obvious picture for people. And so that is my big grievance with the concept of tuckable clips. Because even if you were to take these and you were to attempt to run either them or the, uh, the discrete carries behind the belt, they're still, I mean, they're considerably less noticeable, but over the course of the day as you move around, they are going to become exposed to some degree, and then you still run into that same issue of deviating from somebody's norm and potentially drawing that additional scrutiny. I mentioned that there's one of these that actually executes well. And Discrete Carry Concepts, to their credit, makes an entire line of behind the belt clips. I've got some kicking around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> I don't know where they are. But basically, instead of them having this long tab, since they don't have to clear a belt, the tab itself is maybe an inch wide and so it literally just attaches to the fabric of the pants and I'll concede those hide pretty damn well behind a belt so if you are not going to be running an Enigma that is definitely your best bet for a tuckable style of holster there's a couple of considerations though number one is the, the little teeth on those uh, discrete carry concepts clips grab exceptionally well. The drawback is that they grab exceptionally well. And if you're wearing them with any degree of regularity, they are eventually going to tear up the fabric of whatever waistband you're hooking them onto. Uh, the other challenge is not really an issue with the clip itself, but because the clip is only attaching to the fabric of the pants, then at that point, the fabric of the pants is really the primary thing that is supporting the weight of the gun. And so, you know, you're, you're now increasing the PSI, essentially, and there can be a potential to snag. One way to prevent this is if your pants fit properly. Because, and I've talked about this before, ideally, when you are attaching a holster to the waistline of whatever it is that you're wearing, this little band of fabric should not be the sole attachment point where everything is making contact. Because right now, with these jeans, I've got the actual clips that are attached to the holster, but this is also hugging me enough that the fabric is pulling the holster into my body. And so there is a certain degree of friction that exists to where the, the, the pressure created by the fit of the pant against my body and the, the holster being sandwiched there is primarily what is holding everything in place. And the clips now, instead of having to bear the entire loaded weight of the gun, really are just having to kind of anchor it so that it doesn't drift vertically. So those are some of the considerations. Um, if you are going to run a holster that needs to be worn in a tucked in shirt, um, and you are doing it because you need a truly discreet option, then really the, the DCC behind the belt clips are the only option. I'm not even willing to, to sign off on, on saying that these work because they, they, frankly, they don't. Um, unless you are strictly concealing out of sort of courtesy or formality, and honestly, the only time I could see that being the case is if you are armed as part of your job 
And so you're trying not to be overt about it, but you don't necessarily have to be undetectable. Then um, at that point, okay, maybe it'll fly if the, uh, you know, if the concealment goal that you have is simply not to, as Masada would say, scare the horses. Um, but realistically, for the civilian defender, for those of us uh, for whom being armed is not part of the job, and it's purely there in sort of the, uh, the counter-robbery type of, uh, of posture, if you need to tuck your shirt in, the DCC behind the belt clips are the solution. All these other ones, they can be marketed as tuckable, but they ain't. The only benefit is the, the structural element of it that I talked about in last week's video, where it's just more forgiving on the holster body to have a lower attachment point than one uh, with like one big over, you know, over clip. So something to think about because at the end of the day, we don't know what people notice unless they actually express it to us. And a lot more people notice than talk about it. I was talking with a friend of mine and, and he made a point. Um, there's a difference between people noticing and people caring. We don't know what people notice and we can't control which people care or not about the fact that we're armed. We can simply control how much information they have access to. So, you know, just don't, don't do this. This is lazy. It's, it doesn't even, you know, at this point, this is just open carry on hard mode in my opinion. But, uh, let's hear about it down in the comments. What do you guys think? Other than that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.